लाइव हैव बीन स्टार्ट हैज बीन स्टार्टेड ऑलरेडी सो असलकुम एवरी वन हियर वी आर गोन स्टार्ट आवर इवेंट द एक्साइटमेंट कैन नॉट बी एक्सप्रेस आफ्टर ऑल सो लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस फर्स्ट दिस इज मेहजबीन द होस्ट ऑफ दिस इवेंट एंड देयर इज आवर मेन्टर मिस लाइबा खान एवरी वन प्लीज वेलकम हर you are cordially Hello. welcome sister thank let you. me reveal that uh, okay so uh, let me reveal that she is a fashion and textile designer from nifty sphere institute of art and design islamabad pakistan yes so welcome to this event sister thank you thank you so much okay so how are you I'm fine. I hope you all are good and good, doing good. Okay. So, uh, how are you feeling to join with us? I'm feeling so honored, and it is um, it is so great to have you all over here. Okay. It is my pleasure so to give this so workshop and let you guys know a lot. I hope you learn. You guys learn a lot. Yeah. Yeah. uh okay so uh we had already revealed that we fashion show was going to arrange a workshop on fashion portfolio de- uh, development by laiba khan through a live session on our facebook page so here we go miss laiba sister uh you may pro- proceed about the topic uh can okay, so we basically yeah yeah sure Okay, so should I start? Yeah. Okay. 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 Then you so, start. Yeah. Um, uh, this is going to be about how to arrange and create your portfolio regarding fashion and textile both, uh, because many people have so many questions regarding what to put where and how to arrange it. So, so I like you know how to put uh, things according to what people has to view. Uh, for example, there are questions regarding whether we should uh, put uh, all the research or maybe the practical work, and uh, whether we should uh, put the testimonial or not. So this is going to be the workshop regarding the portfolio development, how and uh, what you should include, what is important, and how you should figure out that. Um, what the next person who is going to check your portfolio what is important what should be there to attract that person so i am going to uh share the screen okay so i'm going to start um step by step i'm going to show you guys uh what basically should be the first thing i do have questions uh we did run a little uh, research on what people really need to know whether what what should be the first thing and the last thing and how they should uh, include uh, their work inside the portfolio so i am going to take you to my portfolio so let's start with uh, what is first thing to uh, put okay so here we go so yes first thing that is very important is uh, obviously um the mention stuff for example whether it is only fashion portfolio or whether it is both you need to mention that in your uh, portfolio and you need to put and you need to create a portfolio in a creative way that is not boring enough And the next thing should be in your portfolio is uh, content. So content page is very important in your portfolio as you need to tell that person what is coming next, and you need to tell that person what is included in a portfolio. So like uh, your portfolio is is actually like your book. Uh, like you're writing down your uh, research, your book, or it is going to be like your thesis. so content page is very important in that portfolio um and uh, you should uh, mention uh, the content uh 
the way you are going to put that afterwards. Uh, so do uh, think before putting the content uh, page that you are putting it in the right order and you're not mixing anything because whoever is going to see your portfolio, that person will be expecting what is written in the content page. The next thing should be uh, the bio. Now, uh, many people ask me whether... Uh, they should include bio and why is it important to put bio so i am going to show you my bio this is my bio introduction of myself so it is very important in any field whether that's fashion or textile or whether that's uh, art related any field wherever you make your portfolio it is very important to make your uh, introduction page because people really really like to see what you have for yourself what words you want to use for yourself and for that it is important for you to write few words about what you like what um, you are doing what you have done and how you want to pursue this whole fashion and textile or whatsoever in the future how you want to see yourself and uh, what makes you um, what makes interesting about this portfolio? So bio is one important uh, thing, like uh, self-introduction is one important thing in your portfolio. So the next thing is about uh, the theme. Uh, this is my theme, okay? And I have given the name Enthral. So Anthral name, uh, Anthral means something that fascinates you, something that is so fascinating that you see and that thing fascinates you to any extent. And uh, I have uh, concluded few pictures, as you can see, I have included few pictures over here, uh, making a collage. Today and uh, even with few uh, paint colors or color that I've mentioned. And why is it important? Now, um, as you can uh, see that I have already given you a bit about what uh, my research is going to be on. So it is going to be on all the traditional stuff and all the uh, handicraft of Pakistan and everything that includes handmade and the concept. So uh, giving your team or your research a name is very important. And very um, and many people get fascinated by this that wow you have given name to your research so keep that in mind that according to whatever you're putting according to that you need to put name or th title or anything that you want to uh, you want to let people know that what your team or your research is about. Okay, inspiration board. As you can see, this is my inspiration board. And as you can see, I have uh, I have actually mentioned a lot over here. There's a lot going on. There's some mannequins, uh, some traditional work, art, uh, some uh, ramp walk pictures. And there are some uh, highlights about like, you know, some uh, handicraft and uh, there's a lot going on in this one picture so there's basically almost everything the inspiration board is uh, equivalent very important uh, because without inspiration how come you got this idea so you know if you are going for uh, for a job, for the internship. So, so the interviewer is going to ask you, what was your inspiration? What makes, what made uh, you choose such theme? What made you think that you should work on such theme? So it is very important for you to know what was your inspiration, but not just to know, but you have to put that inspiration into digital form as well. So whether you are there or not, that person can look up uh, the entire uh, image and uh, you know conclude what you really wanted to show that person okay okay so uh, being honest not that uh, it is 
not important for you to um, include just the handmade uh, mood board. You can also include uh, virtual mood board, but but it is important for you to uh, put your mood board. Now, what is mood board? Mood board is all those inspiration, all those inspired pictures that you uh, wanted to include in your mood board that give you inspiration to work on in your uh, future line is actually mood board, where you put everything, where you put whatever you liked, whatever inspired you, whatever you thought it is important for you to put. Uh, and um, the next thing I would like to include in this mood board is that it is good that you hand paint the mood board because um, the interviewer really wants to see your creativity and he or she really wants to know to what extent you um, can play with the colors. So whether it is uh, blue mixed with brown, blue mixed with white, blue mixed with black, that person is there looking forward to see your creativity, whether how good you are with the colors and how easily you can paint. Because there are so many forms of painting as well. There are so many forms of um, understanding paints and there's so many forms of doing it that it is a good uh, way of telling the interviewer or what whosoever uh, that yes you are capable of doing a lot so if um, here i would have shown you digital work so you would have uh, you know you would have thought about like yeah it, it's easy i can do that and we can do that but hand painted mood board is yet in a very different expression that shows um, how capable you are and that impression that you're showing is uh, going to mark a lot in your portfolio. So I uh, know a lot of people include concept in your uh, in their uh, portfolio, which and so many people who went through my portfolio, they asked me, why did I include concept? So uh, we take the inspiration from a lot of things. For example, this book can inspire me you know this book can inspire me or um a cell phone can inspire me to work on anything there's so many things you go nature and abstract art there's so much to get yourself inspired by but it is it is very important for you to know that you need to uh, you know put all those people into your portfolio or into your research who has actually created that particular thing for you to get inspired by. So I do give credit to such people who work day and night and who put a lot of effort in uh, making such beautiful art, beautiful handicraft, beautiful uh, uh, pieces that inspire us for our line, for our work, for our research, for X, Y, Z, anything. So it was very important for me to include this entire image in this portfolio to even let the other person know that um, behind my inspiration are also these people who have worked day and night to create such masterpiece and art pieces in uh, uh, uh in in this in this world that inspired me and inspired so many people so i would like to tell you people that do include concept picture concept is basically uh where did this thing came from and uh, what made people you know who made it who created it and what it made people Think about it. So this is what concept uh, of fan art is known as, that you need to put, um, if, if, you know, people put a lot of effort in making such thing. So with, if they wouldn't have, so there wouldn't be a concept behind anything. So 
uh, in my opinion, it is uh, important to show the concept as well as inspiration board. It is also important to uh, include concept in your portfolio. Moving on. So um, the next thing is our um, wait. Yeah. Okay. So next thing is our um, hand drawn developments. So I do have another hand drawn developments as well. I'm going to open that as well. Okay, what are hand-drawn developments and why are they so important? Uh, okay. uh, so, uh, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, that yes. is, uh, what, what is the difference between mood board and inspiration board? Okay, so mood board includes all the pictures that inspired you. Now whether whatsoever is your um, topic or the research on, you just need to include that in your, uh, the pictures in your mood board, not everything. So I am okay. going again, okay. So right now you can see my inspiration board, right? So as you can see in my inspiration board, I have kept three people as well, the looks that inspired me, um, the dress that inspired me, the jewelry that inspired me, the uh, the the beautiful work uh, of a handicraft that inspired me, the clothes, anything, the colors, everything that inspired me, I included that in my inspiration board. But in my mood board, I only kept the pictures of the work or the research I was uh, working on. So my mood board, my uh, theme was um, handicrafts of Pakistan, right? So I want, I, it, the mood board actually gathers the handicraft work, not uh, the dresses, uh, not the mannequins, not the ramp walk pictures. That is supposed to be in your inspiration board. You can also include few lines in your inspiration uh, board. Like, for example, um, such designs done by Dior inspired me for such reason. But in mood board, you only include pictures and uh, that are cropped pictures that don't have any background. OK, you're understanding me? Pictures that have drawn in the background that you uh, delete the background and you just put the images. For example, as you can see over here. The, these all are just the image of the particular work. So that is how you conclude your uh, mood board. And mood board has no shape. So as you can see, uh, things over here, some of them are hidden under some and some are upside down as you can see, as you can see over here. So mood board has no shape. Mood board is, uh, is all the work, all the details that you include, the images. Uh, is that question clear now? Yeah, the question is clear. Okay, is there any other question? Should I continue? Uh, uh, yeah, there is a question that uh, uh, there are some comments and some questions that uh, have already the audiences done. So when we oh, uh, read out the comments, yeah, yeah, over here I have a question on my desktop, which is like, uh, yeah, can yeah. you please tell me about the design sense or how to choose inspiration picture, color, and fabric swatch? Okay. So uh, over here, I would like to uh, give you one to two sentences about how. Uh, firstly, it all depends on your creativity. So I chose uh, first uh, inspiration that I received for was from the history 
um and the second thing was to work on it according to myself now see these handicrafts are done in uh past so many years it has been going on past so many years and now we are more into such things because we know the value of work but those were the images that i got from google i got from pinterest i got from xyz so many sites but what really inspired me was the work and the colors so uh it is going to be according to your creativity what you can do is search for different uh themes for example search for abstract art search for something you like some makeup or fashion designs Uh, anything anything that inspires you search for it search for the history search for their color theme search for their uh, looks search how many people has already worked in it search for that once you have done your research you can uh, then you are able to search on whether that is a good idea to proceed for your um for the line or not so uh, i was having two options when i started doing my portfolio development and one was a history of a country so i would not name the country it was just a history that i was supposed to work on uh, one of them the one country i want to wanted to work on was uh, africa because of their color theory they have all the neon colors which right now so many people and so many brands are working on that you know neon green neon yellow neon blue so uh, africa it is it, africa is full of those colors so i really wanted to work on africa and the history and their culture traditions but i did not because i was not able to find a lot on the website and then uh, i started searching more and more to so see i was even at that time i was searching i was not finished uh, you know okay africa it is okay no i was searching and the more to search the more you find and that is where you will see the inspiration so that can be anywhere from anywhere if you're done with that later on you play with the colors the fabric and the designs so uh, i'm going to complete the answer with my portfolio because i've done like i have given the half the answer now i'll uh, step up and uh, complete the answer um Okay, there's another question from PT, ma'am. How to choose color which suit to skin color or people's skin color? So there's a uh, nothing like I don't know how to really answer that because uh, uh, I feel like we if we think uh, um, neon is for neon is such a dark color, but uh, many people wear it and it it is like. whatever suits you i feel like fashion is uh, whatever suits you and whatever you feel like wearing whatever you are comfortable in so there is no such such skin color that suit uh, uh, specific colors there is no such thing it is it, it really depends on how people uh, want to see themselves in um like i love royal blue and black so my wardrobe is full of royal blue and black but that doesn't mean pink or red doesn't suit me so it all depends on uh, the uh, on what people uh, think of themselves how they really want to you know groom themselves in what colors they like and how what fashion they want themselves in so this uh, this whole thing there is nothing this has nothing to do with the color or the you know, skin color complexion it all depends on what person uh, is suitable uh, like what fashion or color is suitable for the person whatsoever he or she thinks of okay i'm just going to move uh, on if there is no question okay i'm just going to move on to the portfolio so we were at um, yeah hand drawn development so please um, be focused over here because hand drawn development so many people get confused when i tell them what hand drawn developments are um so there are two types of hand drawn developments first is pen tool and the second one is using pencil okay i hope you can see my pencil <laughs> okay 
so pen tool is a uh, very important for you to know if you are a fashion student if you are a textile student you really need to know what pen tool is and how to work with it um so if you don't know uh, work with it as much as you can because um it is going to be a success for your business or for your career pen tool is something you really need to know in your uh, project so working on with the pen tool as you can see even my hand drawn with pen tool is not perfect i just included what the details were and next thing which is important in the hand drawn development which is what and how creative if you can be to create your own design um using pencil so as you can see over here i have have included a chunka a earring then a plate and bangles over here and sketch them on a paper first and then i've scanned them for my um to put that in my portfolio so uh, hand on development is it, it is important there there is more there are more types of hand on developments traditional abstract over here i am showing you more of my designs which is traditional um, hand on developments and you know traditional hand on developments are very important because there are so many things there's so much work on traditional these days uh, bridal designs uh, fancy but in, in each and every in in all the designs in each and of everything you will see there are some uh, such hand drawn developments so one development is then repeated further right so um and uh, if i am the interviewer and uh, i have to interview you so it is important for me to ask you and you to answer me that what extent you can go and create your own design you know and these hand on developments if you have them in your portfolio then the interviewer wouldn't ask you this question because uh, he or she can clearly see how creative you are with your hand drawn developments and with such developments we are so you are so precise and uh, you have kept your developments such uh, unique and with uh, uh, you know with such creativity so i guess there's no there's no question um there's no other question because of how you have kept your uh, developments and uh, so many people they don't include these developments i don't know why because i know they did such such things takes a lot of time i know that but once you are done with all those uh, all these process then nobody is going to ask you a lot you are simply you are simply going to forward your portfolio and you will get uh, whether you are getting accepted or not uh, uh, people who have less in their portfolio are question more rather people who have so much in your portfolio they are not questioned a lot so keeping in that in mind you need to put a lot in your portfolio all the creativity and um, your work so i right now i have shown you two of my hand drawn developments which is the traditional motif and these are the abstract motifs is there a question okay so uh, another question we have got that is uh, wait uh, do okay, we uh, have do you uh, do we do have, have to write any uh, description in mood, mood board yes uh no uh, mood board is um is just the number of pictures and uh, the pictures that you're working on the basic theme you're working on you just need to uh, put that in your mood board mood board has nothing to do with description and the title and whatsoever description uh, or the title whatever you want to put you can put that in, in inspiration board okay okay should i uh continue okay yeah, yeah sure 
there was another question that just uh, okay yeah. i have one more question what skill needs to improve mainly for making a perfect pattern uh it is going to depend on uh, yet again creativity and how much time you put in your work uh, the i i worked for 8 to 9 hours on my portfolio development being very honest like my hand was it was just a paining in the end of the day but i had to do that because i wanted things to go perfectly fine uh, so it depends on how much you're putting in your um work the time you are putting uh, the more uh, keep on sketching uh, one thing i'll tell you i sketched a lot there were so many patterns that i sketched there were so many patterns in the end of the day i was so confused which one to include in my portfolio but um, you see there was that was a time when i included few of my work uh, from the sketch Uh, 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 pattern and a few of them were bad. Catch as much as you can. So I'm going to go now to portfolio. So over yeah, here you yeah. can see me as well, right? Yeah. Okay. So here was all the work, your handwork. It is. Um, all your hand work okay now we are going uh, to um, all the digital work so this is prints and variations my favorite 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 topic so uh, prints and variations is a very easy topic and many people get confused uh, what print and what variations so prints variations is um mood board is actually the entire how you actually uh, played with the uh, the mood board so just a minute okay um so the reason i asked you to paint the mood board was from that mood board okay so the mood board you design digitally okay first obviously you design a mood board digitally i'm just going to give you an example because i know it's going to be get it's going to get really confusing this way so wait a minute okay so this was uh, this is an image as you can see over here and And this mood board was first designed digitally, and then I uh, painted this mood board. Okay, so I could have played with this mood board, uh, you know, with for my prints, uh, prints variations. But like I said, how important it is to make uh, your mood board hand painted. Okay. so hand painted mood board has more value than the digital mood board i know it is not easy uh, even to create a digital mood board it's, it is very hard to include everything that you like and all the images and um, uh, all the all the uh, you know very uh, small details but um, hand painted mood board gives a lot it, it tells a lot about your capability so i would just ask you to do hand paint in mood board which is also uh, in if you see if you are if you take courses online which is affiliated by london uh, uh, university of london they then you will get to know that it is very important for them to uh, include hand painted mood board so i'm not telling you to do something uh, which is going to be useless for you no 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 it is going to be very very useful for you in your future because hand painted mood board is recognized in a lot of portfolios especially um uh, universities uh, uh, abroad universities they prefer people they prefer their students 
students to work on hand paint and uh, hand drawn developments more than the digital work uh, digital work is important for your um, for your designing of clothes and uh, for your um, designing of uh, the, the the other details uh, but not uh, the other like not the few uh, what you can say um few details like uh, hand on developments are actually details that you are going to put in your portfolio so uh, such things have more value than digital work but is digital work more important um, than practical work or uh, handmade or hand drawn developments no both are equally important uh, the impression that hand drawn developments or hand painted mood board gives is is something that a person uh, you know judges you that oh wow that person is so creative so that person can create such through sketch and through pencil or through pen tool digital work is uh, everyone once you are practiced with the digital work everyone can okay so prints variations you are going to understand this more um okay so how i actually got my you know how i actually got so many pins and variations through it so mood board so what i did was this is my mood board and uh, my canvas that i chose for my uh, uh, print was 2 by 2 inches okay and then i repeat uh, and I, then i put repeat in that uh, canvas or in that print so that is how i created all these prints so these prints are extracted by the hand painted mood board and then i further uh put the variations for example the filter the color uh, the color scheme and um, uh, the repeats these are the afterwards all the after process uh, so first i uh, got myself stuck with the 2 by 2 inches uh, frame i put that uh, that frame into repeat for example it is going to be half drop or full drop repeat and afterwards which is you can see uh, how to make repeats online already in on my on our facebook uh we have already mentioned the link over there as well so that is how you can put repeat in your design and once you have done that you can play with the color or the filter or whatever you want to put in your print and um, a, a girl asks me why it is important for us to name our print for example over here i have named my print abstract over near here i have named my print december so when you go to a, a outlet fashion outlet any store that you want to purchase you see over there it is mentioned that this is 2b collection this is 3b collection this is 2a collection so all the collection has different names some uh, goes with the number and then alphabet uh, alphabet which is like 2a to b some goes with different names for example someone would have gone with radiant this is radiant collection this is summer collection this is winter collection so people do give their collection a name um this is this is when they give their print a name when you give your print a name that is how you make your collection right so it is important for you to distinguish between your prints as well and how you can do it by giving them a particular name so uh before moving to my um women wear just going to see if there's any question i cannot really see any questions do we have any questions yet do we have any questions yet uh, 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 there are some technical issues uh, okay no uh, there is a question that is 
uh, what inspiration we get to make the mood board uh, do yeah, we have to write this like inspiration from and nature animal from or household item okay so uh, the question uh, really uh, is whether we should uh, give bio about the inspiration right whether we should give introduction about the inspiration or whatever theme you're working on yes it is important but the interviewer doesn't really read all that uh, like i said bio, self bio is very important because interviewer is going to read about you uh, okay this xyz okay this xyz has done this okay this xyz has uh, more um, interest in uh, whatsoever so the interviewer doesn't really read your uh, technical in uh, introduction for example what theme you're working on so if you're working on uh, a country or a nature animal or household item so you just need to write that or or i would say when you have concluded your pictures right when you have included the pictures so from where um from that particular view a uh, interviewer gets to know uh, whatever you're working on and uh, the next the, the other thing i would say is that um if you write too much in your bio or in your inspiration mo uh, board or in, in your mood board then it is just going to make the interviewer gets bored with your uh, work so he or she won't really you know flip pages you know he or she is going is supposed to flip pages to see what you have next so when you have a lot in your first or second page then he or she is going to get like you know uh, get a uh, cranky about it so uh, don't include a lot of description introduction do give title or a theme name to your uh, work okay uh, there is uh, another question from tasnim s emo uh, she asked that which site did you re research Okay, there are so many sites. You uh, recent. There are so many sites you can work on. Uh, there's Pinterest, Google. Uh, you can go for even you can go for Facebook. Some people have uh, more stuff over there as well. So um, it doesn't depend. You can go for newspaper, magazines, uh, books. so it depends on your research if your research is historical then you can go for books as well or for magazines as well and for social media and uh, uh, you know different novels yeah, but if you are on art uh, or art related work then uh, i think pinterest is more uh, useful what more pinterest the kawaje any other question uh yeah uh, there is another uh, question that uh, um, if we make a hand drawn portfolio yeah. is it valuable for our intern a uh, hand drawn development or hand drawn portfolio hand drawn portfolio okay so um in the okay so basically fashion and textile is all about practical work which i which i agree but mainly in textile you have so much practical work uh, that you need to put that in your portfolio because obviously that is important tie and dye batik thread work you know you have to put that in your portfolio because you have to show the interviewer that yes you can do and you have knowledge about all these things sure but when you're doing uh, when you're going for internship or for job it is important for you to know how to work on adobe and how to work digitally because uh, now as we can see there's so much digitally and so much things on computer uh, or desktop that people require something like that 
uh, you know, people uh, are looking for young graduates, young students who would like to work digitally. Uh, it takes a lot of time when you are making a hand-drawn, you know, sketch, hand-drawn motifs, and it takes less time when doing that in digital. So I would, I would say, uh, go for both hand-drawn as well as digital form. You can put your practical work, like you can stick that in your uh, um, book. And that will show that you have done it hand drawn and digital. Because digitally, you have to uh, you have to sit at off or uh, other uh, softwares, but uh, like Adobe Illustrator. So I would say go for both because equally they both the digital and practical work they both are equally very important. Any other question? Uh, no, we can't see any other question. Okay, I'm just going to continue now. Uh, so yeah. now, uh, so the girl just asked me about uh, this portfolio, whether it should be hand drawn or digital. So now I'm going to uh, tell you about how important it is for you to uh, acknowledge your digital uh, strength because. Um, if you have digital skills, only then you can create all. And you see how uh, how creative this all looks because you have mentioned you can see the design, you can see the mannequin, you can see how she is standing and how she's posing. Uh, you can put the little details, for example, the color, the motif. So you know, different things really uh, matter. Like every single detail matters a lot so um doing fashion and textile uh i feel like we should not bound ourselves with the gender uh we should play every um gender we should play with every fashion we should play with uh, from very young age to old age and uh keeping in mind that uh, colors uh shouldn't differ like you know we shouldn't distinguish our colors especially when we are fashion uh, students uh, because um you see we we have this society has made a very uh, a, a small um difference between a girl and a boy that a girl has to wear pink and the boy is supposed to wear black or blue and the boy does not now that boy is feeling so shy to wear red, pink, blue, green, that um, it, it is just too confusing for that one person to do that. So being a fashion student, a fashion designer, or a, who is, uh, you know, working in a fashion field, it is our duty, our job to actually change the mentality. Uh, so I would say, uh, even in your portfolio, Try to indulge um, with different uh, colors and uh, with different uh, whatsoever the gender is, whether it's a male or a, a woman. Just try yourself to be in different um, uh, out of the box. Just think out of the box. Don't think what society has to say. Think what you want yourself uh, to see. Uh, so right now, as you can see, I have mentioned turquoise green, red, maroon, pink for women. And uh, I have given details, aromatic train. If you're going to search, you will get to know. With that, I have kept a handbag, clutch. Over here, it's a shawl. So I have, uh, in, I have included a little motif over there. So... Uh, it, it is uh, that if you work digitally or through Adobe or Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, that gives you a little more strength in that gives a little more strength in your portfolio uh, because of the creativity you can do. You know how uh, easily you can play with uh, the the tools. So. Um, so many people ask me this question that I have over here. Then why did you uh, uh, 
chose this much canvas and have, why did you include this and why did you give like you know description description about anthrill women their fashion and on the this and then on half canvas you have or she I would have kept my digital illustration like this from keeping this um this page from uh, this page I would have skipped this and I would have you know talked this page then the interviewers for whosoever is going to whosoever watching my um dress uh, like my work he or she is going to feel like oh it is very plain it is very simple no we don't need such uh, such uh, you know a uh, student or re fresh graduate we want someone who is more creative with the designs so enhance my look from here i included a page, you know a canvas uh, between my designs and uh, yes your design should include uh, eastern and western both please don't just go for western because uh, if you are just don't go for western or just traditional or eastern go for both because um when you are applying for the work or for internship or job it is so important for you to understand that people want more from you okay they don't want limited additions from you they want more and more the more you're going to give them in your portfolio the more there are chances for you to get accepted uh then over here i have so i really wanted to keep this image without any background colors or without any description because i wanted people to focus on designs more than um the the background looks so this is my eastern collection and um, if, uh, so many people ask me why didn't you give depth like you know white color more why didn't you put more depth in your designs i was like because people wants to see me playing with uh, the cuts and uh, the interviewer want me to uh, want me uh, want to see uh, how with the colors so basically uh, this is it this is what i really wanted to give that person or the impression about my designs that's why i didn't paint the mannequin but if you want to paint the mannequin or the girl or whoever is wearing a design you can paint that as well and you can give details uh, you know you can put more details in it i just wanted to uh, wanted my designs to pop up more so here are more there is a more collection western and eastern both so as you can see uh and a few people asked me that uh whether we can uh, put like you know the mannequin from pinterest so uh, yes you can but as you can see this mannequin this one this one this one so i've created them this one i got from pinterest so you can do that as well but you need to know like this one i did my own this one i did my own these two on my own so uh when once you know how to use the pen tool then it is it is it's going to be very easy for you to create anything like legit anything and um, if you want a little more help then you can use pinterest as well uh and yeah so you can use uh, technical drawings as well with uh, with the pen tool you can create technical drawings as well i did not include that because i included that in more stuff so i wanted to keep it very plain and simple uh, for these two collections so coming with women shoes and accessories you are a fashion designer who plays with um fabric who plays with fashion who plays with styling so yes it is important for you to know what accessories is going to look good and uh, when you are doing textiles so it is very important for you to know 
that you are making your textile print okay you are creating look or the color for the fabric or the print for the fabric and a fashion designer is someone who is pursuing that fabric into design um even have a video that as well you just go to just for the quick fashionista and you'll find every bit of it um so a textile designer is supposed to know what color to uh, color to choose what a uh, print to make what um, fabric you know uh, we also like textile designer is supposed to know what print is going to look good in what fabric okay so why i included fashion a uh, woman shoes and accessories because when you are a textile designer you work on every field you work on shoes you work on bags you work on um, women accessories you accessories you work on men's accessories so you work on thing uh that, that is the reason why i included women's shoes and accessories uh, and uh, with that i did give technical drawings as well and yes you need to know these uh, technical drawings and how to create them with the pen tool on adobe photoshop or adobe illustrator including fashion men fashion shoes and accessories so my majors was in women uh i did my majors in women i did not do majors in men uh because i wanted to target myself and pursue it uh, for women not men in my career so but i did um learn how to create uh technicals of uh, shoes and accessories and as you can see over here i played with bow uh with neon green and green prints uh and they all, they are all printed so now many people would think printed and men accessories looks weird and uh it's not something people would like men would like this is just us keeping such things in our mind so like i said always think out of the box when you are creating something when you are uh, you want to look unique you have to be creative you have to think out of the box out of the world out of something that is not within the society you have to think different and for that i went into deep 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 thoughts and which was different than what society has to say and what feelings and that is the reason why i have created all these designs and i've kept them in uh, men fashion as you can see over here the bow is purple purple bow with printed bow is it is going to look weird you know people thinking about it but no uh, a designer has to think something that is uh, that is unique that is creative uh, and that is what i am trying to explain to you guys that think research play as much as you want in the end in the end of the day it is all going to be a unique masterpiece that you have created here comes the kids fashion so i really wanted myself to keep like you know keeping myself into kids fashion i really like that i love doing it so as you can see uh, Uh, these all prints that are extracted are from my hand painted mood board nothing is from digital everything is from hand painted mood board and i have just given my prints a little variation a little color a little depth and that's it i have played differently and um uh, uh you know just playing with a uh, some kind of abstract uh so over here as you can see uh kids fashion or fun fashion you know uh going half shirt is like a black and half is printed frogs uh shorts so i feel like um there's no boundary there's no bound there's, there's no limit to kids fashion kids uh, looks amazing and cute in any fashion you, you you want them to wear they look absolutely stunning in that uh and so many people want ask me to uh, why didn't i just kept like you know um plain shirt and shorts with print uh because uh kids kids love 
uh, when they are wearing colorful things so um, you know playing with orange in um, boys edition was a little tricky for me i was like people my uh, my teacher wouldn't really accept it because it's orange is neon orange and then um, it is going to be in um, boys fashion but uh, even my teacher was like no it is it is a really good combination having neon orange uh, shirt and and a printed short you know because kids love it kids love uh, colors so that's how you can uh, in, you know really attract them and uh, being a fashion with the colors and um, prints is something that you will learn with time prints is not something that you just going to learn in one night so once you get to know you'll acknowledge how to make prints how to put variations in it then you will see yourself uh you know flying 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 up before forwarding i am just going to see if we have any questions do we have any questions yes we have some questions so uh, there is a question that is there any difference for making portfolio for fashion designer and textile designer from onindita guho yes uh when you are particularly working in uh, fashion um then you include more of your uh, digital work for example you are working with mannequins so you are working with the designs so you are putting yourself into that box where you are working with fashion only and there's nothing to do with what print you're using what color you have created because you don't do that fashion designers are not supposed to create the fabric textile designer creates the fabric fashion designer plays with the fabric okay so there are two different criteria but when you're doing majors in both fashion and textile so i would ask you when you're doing bachelors basically when you're doing bachelors so you do the bachelor in fashion and textile design, right so you have to include both in your portfolio but when you do majors for example you specializing yourself into just fashion then you should be just fashion how you pursue those fabric into design whether that's long skirt short shirt uh, long shirt uh, short trouser so you are actually creating the design that is what fashion designer do and when you are creating when you have done majors in uh, textile um, then you have to include and you have to be very specific with your details what color did i use or what color i mix with this color to include in my fabric and what is the fabric type how i create that fabric because you know weaving you know that is how a fabric is made right so in your portfolio then you are more of the practical person because you include all those details as well as your practical work any other question okay so uh, there is another question that is how can we make our portfolio attractive is there any suggestion from you from your experience from ali uh, no i didn't get it can you ex uh, say it again okay 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 yeah i i repeat it uh, uh, how can we make our portfolio attractive is there any suggestion from your experience okay you can make your portfolio attractive uh, with the unique ideas for example like i said i could have uh, kept my portfolio very uh, plain but including such things like such backdrops or um, such colors such prints and motifs this is how, uh, this is the reason why my portfolio looks uh, uh, very attracting and uh, unique so i would like uh, to say 
include more colors include more variations make it unique make uh, yourself work in interior as well like you know uh, when you are doing textile designing which you are which you have to when you are doing bachelor's in fashion textile so many people ask me why did i include interior in my um portfolio so let me ask you guys this question when you have done uh, when you made your uh, uh, you, when you are you know experience and your expertise is in making a print doesn't a print is used is it a print is a print use in uh, pillows bed sheet wall hangings you see so this is how i Uh, distinguished my portfolio from hundred of others that I included everything that I liked, everything that I could that I could have used my prints into. Uh, so play with colors, play with different um, tools. When you are playing, when you are using Adobe Photoshop, it actually gives you so many tools to play with that you can actually create a very creative and different portfolio. so it put um, neon colors in it um it should have you know different uh, uh images different uh, uh art so that is how you can make it unique and creative any other yeah there is uh, another question that is uh, uh, ma'am i want to know which site is more informative for a fashion designer like photos updated which site is more informative uh which site is more informative for a fashion designer like photos dot updated Okay, I think uh, she wants to know about website uh, or something like that. I would like say that. every site is very informative, as uh, as you know, you will get different uh, research from different sites. But uh, nowadays, everyone uses Pinterest because um, it is more fast in um, uh, the information. and it has more knowledge uh, google gives you information but um, google has more of the information like what people has to say like you know what people is giving you know, to pinterest but um, uh, to google but pinterest has so many options to look forward to so i would say go for pinterest whenever you are searching something go for google and pinterest but keep your mind into pinterest because it gives you more options and more creativity Okay so we can any other see any other Okay So moving forward uh Hello okay so like i said when you are doing both when you are doing your bachelor's in um fashion and textile so basically you are including both in your portfolio so fabric book is very important because you need to know what fabric type and what type and what is the fabric feel so uh, over here leather wool um uh shimmer fabric net fabric uh, all uh, uh, uh jersey so linen cotton silk uh, these are the fabric types that you need to know because uh, uh if you are just doing bachelors and you just after bachelors you want to pursue as a um uh, internship as an attorney or you want to work 
or you want to start your own business then you need to acknowledge what type of fabric is uh, into the fashion and uh, if you are touching the fabric from the touch of the fabric or for the look of the fabric you you need to know what fabric type it is um so for that you need to acknowledge fabric book as well you need to make your own fabric book uh, there are there are uh, fabric that you can do tie and dye batik on like you know um, uh, or embroidery on so you need to know that as well what kind of what fabric we can use for tie and dye what fabric we cannot use and um, how we can be manipulative with our um fabric so i am just going to to uh okay. so basically this is my practical work so this is embroidery i did stenciling batik fabric manipulation tie and dye there are so many tie and dyes because i love tie and dye i just love playing with tie and dyes i just don't know why so uh these color were um that i uh, yeah, these were the tie and dyes i have used color but this black over here you know so what happened is this was a fine fabric cotton fabric and i wanted to make um a uh, uh, tie and dye look sun uh, shape tie and dye look but uh, the fabric that i you know knotted was it was not tight enough and because of that reason the the entire fabric got black and when it got black obviously i uh, my uh, this thesis display was you know um, the end of the week and now i was having two days for that only so i wanted to do something I, I i had to do something and i cannot really you know do the entire process again so what i did i used bleach you know the fabric cutting bleaches i used that and uh, as you can see it is just another piece now i included that in my thesis display and nobody got to know that it was a mistake that i regret how you are supposed to make you are working on and how extent you can work on that because if you play a lot with chiffon you will start seeing that chiffon gets teared up if you play a lot with silk you will see the threads from the silk fabric is coming off um if you play a lot with uh, leather fabric so you will see there are so many you will see uh, uh, the leather of the fabric is uh it's going to feel uh, like it's already tied up so uh you need to acknowledge to what ex extent you can play with the fabric like what if I, if, if what i did more with this uh, uh with this fabric it might have gone really bad it could have been a disaster so um you need to acknowledge that as well so for that you are supposed to make your own fabric book this is the digital fabric book but in my printed fab in my printed book i did you know i survey the market i went to the market i got myself little pieces of fabric and i pasted that fabric into my portfolio with the description what fabric it is if that fabric can be used in tie and dye or not and whether we can do what styles we can create fabric and uh, how this fabric is made so everything is written in that as well so this is just a form for your acknowledgement here comes the interior so like i said uh, like i was talking about uh, being a fashion and textile designer it just it doesn't really bound us with uh, the the ladies only you really need to play with the kids the men fashion but with the interior as well uh, because now as we can see time is just letting us know that well, there's so much in this world uh that people have already been uh into and they have already learned that uh if i see myself i am way back i am learning so they they ex their expertise is in that and i'm still learning that uh so uh, but with this with this interior picture so many people telling me like wow we why didn't we think of it why didn't this come in my in, in our head uh, i wish i could have included something like that because uh, 
it is it is not something very unique okay it is not something very different than what people uh, uh know but it is something that a interviewer or a person wouldn't really guess of a student doing it okay uh, so uh, even my interviewer uh, he didn't really expected me to uh, include an interior design look so uh, for me when i applied for a internship ho oh, here comes the <clears throat> engineer print i am just going to be right back just a minute um just give me a minute i'm going to give uh, get myself water okay yes so let's continue so engineer print is a uh, very tricky and uh, you will need time like i took good time for me to create this print it was uh, no doubt a very 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 tough print for me to create it was something uh, out of the box it was something i had to go like my away from my head and from this world to create this um so what is engineer print so if you know that uh, uh mainly this engineer print is it is it is used in shalwar kameez or kurta trouser um so it is a more a sort of a print that you create Uh, from different elements and more into floral and, and uh, you know you make a entire collection entire shirt dupatta sleeves trouser and um, every each of them have uh, the same print but uh, a little unique or a little different so this is uh, i am going to make a video on this and uh, because of the size the shirt size the back sleeve size size trouser dupatta it is something that you you know you create on your own so you have to create your own pattern like your own print and um, you use your own print to create this engineer print uh it cannot be a copy of you know it cannot really be used from your uh, mood board hand painted mood board it is something that you create on your own so basically this this is entire print is my print like nobody can copy this print this is in my this is my print so uh this is uh, if i start giving lecture on engineer print so it is going to be a next topic so uh, basically in pakistan in in India, uh, we are required to learn uh, engineer print because over here, I think mainly over here we are supposed to uh, create prints for shalwar kameez, kurta, and pajama, and um, you know, uh, so for a uh, sari, whatever. Okay, for that, uh, it is important for us to know that how how to create prints for that. So it is. but it is important for you to put it if in your country uh you are not required to work on shalwar kameez or kurta trouser then just exclude this thing uh, because then it is not important for you but if for pakistan and india it is i know very important okay how oh, here comes the draping technique so it is all going to to be a practical work that i'm going to show you uh 
uh, so draping techniques you need to show four draping techniques and if i say five but you need to show them in your portfolio it is very important please do not skip this um for in uh, draping techniques shows how creative you are when it comes to fabric as i as, like i like said um as a fashion designer you need to know how how to fabric manipulate you know how to do that how to manipulate fabric into different designs how to create them how to fix them how to stitch them so as a design designer you need to know that so these are the uh, four different techniques uh, of draping there is no such name of techniques it is just like what you create is a technique um so please do not skip that this is very important in your portfolio and uh, silk painting as you can see this this is an inspiration and this is what i have done this these are my silk painting so uh, uh, include okay okay so it is important for you to include practical work it is very important this is a uh, Uh, uh you know i just couldn't include my another practical work i'm going to show you that but um uh, please include tech practical work so many people told me that uh, we didn't do it because um uh, practical work is you know when you uh, step in the field so you know you're not sitting over there doing tie and dye batik silk painting you know you're doing much um work in much level so you are not basically doing that but uh why is it not important for you to tell people that yes you are capable of doing it so if in case there is some uh messed up work for example if your worker uh messed silk painting so how would you manage that what i will you be a solution oriented at that time if you don't know what silk painting is if you don't know how to manage silk painting do it then how come you can uh, fix that situation fix that uh, fix uh, messed up work in that situation if you don't know how to do it so i, I the, me i really like like people like it when i included my practical work in portfolio because not everything can be digital and even when you are stepping into a field then over there you get so many practical work how will you manage to uh, do everything digitally you cannot sometimes there are some designs that you do when uh, you drape them first and then they then you stitch them not everything can be stitched without drape so it is important for you to know that you need to drape first uh, some designs and uh, some designs are draped and then stitched so what is what are those designs you know sometimes you are creating your own designs some something that nobody has thought of at that moment um uh, draping is very important what will you do if you don't don't, don't know what draping is so testimonial yes please do give regards to your institution or, or your uni university because they put so much on you they they build you they uh, make sure that you gain good skills that and uh, they contribute in your development of the personality um in the career so i would really 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 appreciate if you guys put testimonial in your uh, develop uh, in your portfolio and these are just the images i got uh, i have from my thesis display so there was entire display of my work and um and it was entire my day so these are some pictures from that. okay so moving to my practical work there's another image which i showed here so um uh now as you all know thread work is also done uh, like there's also machine embroidery um so people don't really sit in Embroid, you know, embroid a lot, but is it not for you to know what embroidery is and type of embroidery? For that, you need to hear uh, 
But these are three different types of fabric manipulation. These know how to manipulate fabric, you know. Uh, then it is going to be absolutely difficult for me to play with a lot other stuff. Um, so first thing that I need to know and acknowledge myself is to how to manipulate with fabric. Stenciling, batik, tie and dye is, you know, uh, the other topic. Uh, so the, this is I with my beads, like it's a beads work. Uh, the prints over here, as you can see, it is from the hand pin mood board. I uh, got myself, like, you know, printed my prints because I really wanted to see how they really look in real life. So I have that as well. I included that in my portfolio. And uh, uh, that that is the reason why I got so many appreciations because I included everything that I did. Uh, not like, you know, in a messed up position, but in a way that people uh, get inspiration from. So keeping in that, keeping that in mind, put not a lot, but all the masterpieces that you create. So do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? Uh, okay, so there is a question. Sorry, uh, there is a question that is uh, I have uh, uh, that is from Ma Maria Montashari that uh, I have one more question. What skill needs to improve mainly yes, for know. making a perfect pattern? Oh, okay, know. it's about pattern making. Okay, so um. Pattern. There are two different types of pattern, which is hand drawn developments, which is pattern, and the next pattern is um, when you get yourself uh, a pattern from your ha hand painted mood board. Mm -hmm. And for both of them, you need to acknowledge your creativity to what extent you can be creative with and um, uh, work on that pattern, different patterns. Uh, whether that's abstract, that is whether it is 3D form, just work in that pattern as much as you can. Practice, practice is the key basically for a perfect pattern. I. Is there any other question? Uh, no, there is. There are no questions. So, guys, if you have any question, uh, feel free to ask because we have to uh, wind up this. I have included everything I could uh, in my portfolio development, and uh, to actually uh, the tips and the tricks, what you should do, what you should not do. We'll be uploading this live video onto YouTube and Facebook as well. But whosoever has joined this uh, uh development live workshop and um, for keeping us the track of that person, please, please, please go after this live workshop and uh, uh, solve that quiz. It just has three to four. four uh, uh, get your certificate. Uh, how can uh, how can we make our designs and more unique in your suggestions? So basically, you need to know, you need to acknowledge what theme you're working on, and you need to have a good description for that. My description was handicraft, so so many people ask me, uh, uh, "Isn't your print too uh, colorful? It isn't your print too." you know i am distracting or so my reason was that because i wanted to work something that is more unique and traditional something more eye-catching something more you know that pinches your eye you know 
if we feel this way that uh, uh, that something that pinches you is actually taking more attention from you so i wanted that and that is how i kept it um so yes i feel like um you can um just make it unique make it make it more sense by description uh, by by playing with it uh uniqueness comes from um you know when you put your creativity in it and you make it something different something that is not in the market something that people don't won't really expect from you to show but you have created that so that uh, will come from practicing and creating research colors play with so many colors in the end that you get confused which color to put but put those three to two colors that you feel are perfect for your collection it can be 100 uh, you, you cannot really choose uh, colors uh it can be 100 colors that you feel like are going to be a success for your portfolio i hope you guys liked this uh, live workshop and as you learn not a lot but a little bit uh, i know not many can learn a lot from this small uh, uh, time period workshop but the little you can learn and i think that that would be beneficial for you uh, if you have any questions you can still uh, even after a workshop you can still message and ask no issues uh, the live the uh, workshop will be posted on youtube and facebook so you can go and check anytime and uh, you know once you create your portfolio do share it with us do share some Im images that we know that yeah so you have understood good <laughs> from our workshop and uh, yeah. i have few questions over here from the course like the research that in i'm just going to and uh, later in quiz you know what to answer so first question uh, is how to include uh, images so when you are creating your research from those research from google or pinterest whatever site you are using not every picture should be included in your portfolio keeping that in mind pick something that is unique pick something that is different pick something that not many people would expect you to include what to include whatever you research is just include that um don't mix so many uh, things in your uh, portfolio or else it is going to be something different something not um, not from your uh, team or your research to uh, so include what your what your theme is about why is research important research is important for you to acknowledge what theme you are going to work on and to make your mood board and inspiration board you need to search a lot keep on searching keep on searching until you get all your answers from whatever the questions you have why should you include bio i have already told you you should include your bio because uh, for the interviewer of whoever is uh, going through your portfolio it is very important for them to know what who you are what your interest in uh, is in and uh, what makes you choose this field is only digital work more important no both practical and digital work are important both both are equally important what should be the last thing to include and why is briefing important should be portfolio wait a minute um so as i said i already told you guys i am just getting a message again about uh, the quiz don't miss the quiz because um once you're going to solve once you're going to solve the quiz only then you will get the uh, e certificate so what should be the last thing to include as i have already told you that your last thing should be your practical work and practical work is very important so yes include that 
why is briefing important should be portfolio lengthy or should you keep it precise you should keep it precise don't include everything you like just include what you feel is important like you know you do you don't highlight everything in your book you highlight the main topics or the main sentences main uh points so this is what this is how you are supposed to keep your portfolio put what is important in your theme or research so here is the end i have answered almost all the questions uh, so i hope you guys have clear image uh on uh, how you are supposed to create your own portfolio development uh, of uh, fashion and textile portfolio so i hope it is going to be a uh, benefit for your uh, and uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask uh so should we wind up yeah so uh okay. in the end i would like to say that so today we have learned many things about fashion portfolio development mm -hmm. from this workshop mm -hmm. it's very fruitful i think it's very fruitful for everyone oh. who wants to learn it eagerly basically it is such a great opportunity for oh, upcoming fashion designers uh, to develop their fashion portfolio and also uh, learn to develop and arrange everything perfectly since we